The world would be a very different place without ships. They transport everything from food and clothes to people. But what many don't know is most ships emit a dangerous mix of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide and carbon particulates. And these airborne pollutants can travel hundreds of kilometers. So even people living far away from the coast can be affected. A ferry called MS Helgeland has proven that there is an alternative. It's the first new German built ship to use liquefied natural gas instead of dirty crude oil. If it cuts down poisonous emissions, then we're on board. At first glance, the Helgoland doesn't look any different from other ferries in its class. The ship can transport 1,000 passengers and up to 10 freight containers. Its interior also doesn't provide any clues about what makes the Helgoland so special. And yet, with a price tag of 30 million euros, it costs a third more than comparable vessels. All is revealed when the ship leaves port, or rather, its absence is revealing. There's no smoke coming out of the funnels. Unlike with conventional vessels, they emit an extremely noxious mixture of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides and soot. That's dangerous for us to breathe in. Volker Matthias and Andreas Weigelt monitor air quality on the banks of the River Elbe in Hamburg. The sensitive instruments at this monitoring station constantly record air pollution. Every time a ship passes, its sensors register a spike. If you know which ship passes and when, and you factor in the wind direction and speed, then you can work out which ship is responsible for which spike. And that's despite the fact that since 2015, ships docking at Hamburg's port are required to burn relatively clean fuel with a very low sulfur content. But that's relative. It can still contain a hundred times more than car diesel. Things get really dirty when these giants take to the open sea. Out there, ships are allowed to use the cheapest and most polluting fuel that exists. For years, the scientists have been evaluating pollution data from a number of measuring stations and combining it with weather data. They've used the information to construct computer simulations that reveal a very dirty secret. The exhaust fumes don't just drift inland, they also grow increasingly dangerous along the way. Fine particulate matter travels far inland, at times up to 500 kilometers inland. Pollution from the English Channel can affect the entire North Sea region, or central Germany can be hit by pollution from the North Sea. That's closely connected to the nitrogen oxide emissions from shipping. To stop it, we'll have to fit the ship's engines with catalytic converters or start using different forms of propulsion or fuel, like liquid gas. And that is the clean but expensive secret behind the Helgoland. It's the first new marine vessel in Germany to be powered with liquid gas, or LNG as it's known. The gas, which is cooled to minus 164 degrees Celsius, is slowly warmed up before combustion, then injected directly into the engines. LNG reduces nitrogen oxide emissions by around 80% compared to conventional fuels. Emissions of fine particulate matter practically sink to zero. It's great to put out to sea in such a clean way. Until recently, hardly anyone did. But I think that LNG or fuel cells or similar technologies will soon become the norm. Once a week, the ferry has to load up with liquid gas, revealing another hurdle in the switchover to LNG. The relatively small amount of deep chilled gas required by the Helgoland has to be delivered by truck. An efficient and wide-ranging fuel supply system for large marine vessels doesn't yet exist. And safety regulations for liquid gas are strict, even if the ship's first officer isn't worried.
Wenn man jetzt Benzin ähm, tanken würde, ist das wesentlich gefährlicher. Es ist flüssig, es Filling up with gasoline would actually be a lot more dangerous. After all, that's a liquid that evaporates very quickly, and it only takes a little spark to trigger a major catastrophe. LNG isn't like that because it's so cold. It has to be processed before it can ignite. But a good idea alone is not enough to spark a technology transition. The conversion costs and lack of filling stations will put the brakes on development. Without tighter pollution regulations, ships like the Helgoland are likely to remain a rare sight in ports the world over. Traffic in Nairobi can be a nightmare. I sometimes spend hours in the car to get to work. And it's not only annoying for drivers, the traffic jams also impact the environment. Abdul Ghaffar Arnasi, a young filmmaker from Nairobi, decided to do something about the problem and do his bit for the environment. Can one man persuade Kenyans to change their habits to clean up the environment? Abdul Ghaffar Anasi, a young filmmaker from Kenya, is creating a series of public service announcements. The first one encourages Nairobi drivers to shut off their engines in a traffic jam. Drivers save money on fuel and Nairobi's air stays clean. After he shoots, he edits the film and uploads it to YouTube and other social networking sites like Facebook and Twitter. He hopes his simple idea catches on. Abdul Ghaffar Anasi uses art to do his bit for the environment. Do you like that? If you are also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Hashtag doing your bit. We share your stories.